Hello everyone, welcome you all in my YouTube channel. In this video series, we will discuss about AZ500 exam. AZ500 exam is Microsoft Certified Azure Security Engineer Associate exam in which total timing is 150 to 210 minutes and total number of questions will be 40 to 60 questions. Passing score will be 700 and total marks will be 1000. Now coming towards questions. Coming to the question number one, you have an Azure subscription name server. You have Azure storage account name SA1 in a resource group name RG. User and application access the blob service and file service in SA1 by using several shared access signatures and stored access policies. You discover that unauthorized user access both the file service and the block service. You need to revoke all access to SA1. And the solution provided is you create a new stored access policy. Does the solution meet the goal? And the correct option would be no. And the reason for this is creating a new or additional stored access policy will have no effect on the existing policy or the SaaS linked to it. To revoke a stored access policy, you can either delete it or rename it by changing the sign identifier. Changing the sign identifier break the association between any existing signature and stored access policy. Deleting or renaming the stored access policy immediately affects all of the shared access signatures associated with it. Coming to the next question, you have a hybrid configuration of Azure Active Directory. You have an Azure SD Insight cluster on a virtual network. You plan to allow user to authenticate to cluster by using their on-premises Active Directory credentials. You need to configure the environment to support the planned authentication. And the solution provided is you deploy the on-premises data gateway to the on-premises network. Does this solution meet the goal? And the solution will be no. Because instead you can connect SD inside to your on-premise network by using Azure virtual network and a VPN gateway to allow SD inside and resources in the joint network to communicate by name, you must perform the following actions. First, create Azure virtual network. Second, create a custom DNS server in the Azure virtual network. Third, configure the virtual network to use custom DNS server instead of default Azure recursive resolver. Fourth, the configure forwarding between the custom DNS server and your on-premises DNS server. Coming to the next question. Question is same, but the solution provided is different. Solution is you create a site-to-site -site VPN between a virtual network and on-premises network. Does this solution meet the goal? And answer will be yes. Coming to the next question, your network contains an active directory forest named contoso.com. The forest contains a single domain. You have Azure subscription name sub1 that is associated to an Azure active directory tenant named contoso.com. You plan to deploy Azure AD Connect and to integrate Active Directory and the Azure AD DNet, you need to recommend an integration solution that meets the following requirements. And the requirements are, first, ensure that the password policy and user logout restrictions apply to the user account that are synced to the DNet. And second, minimize the number of server required for the solution. Which authentication method should you include in the recommendation? Option A, federated identity with Active Directory Federation Services, ADFS. Option B, 
password hash synchronization with seamless single sign on option c pass through authentication with seamless single sign on and the correct option would be option b password hash synchronization with seamless single sign on because password hash synchronization require the least effort regarding deployment maintenance and infrastructure this level of effort typically apply to organization that only need their user to sign in to office 365 saas app and other azure ad based resources when turned on password hash synchronization is a part of ad connect sync process and runs every 2 minutes coming to the next question your network contains an on premises active directory domain name corp.contoso.com you have an azure subscription name sub1 that is associated to azure active directory tenant name contoso.com you sync all on premises identities to azure ad you need to prevent user who have given name attribute that start with task from being sent to azure ad the solution must minimize administrative effort what should you use option a synchronization role editor option b web service configuration tool option c azure ad connect wizard option d active directory user and computer and correct solution would be synchronization rules editor coming to the next question you are implementing conditional access policy you must evaluate the existing azure active directory risk event and risk label to configure and implement the policy you need to identify the risk label of the following risk event option a user with leaked credential option b impossible travel to a typical location option c sign in from ip addresses with suspicious activity which level should you identify for each risk event we have the levels and we have the reasons first impossible travel to a typical location second user with leak credential and third sign in from ip addresses with suspicious activity and the solutions would be impossible travel to a typical location this would be medium user with leaked credential this would be high sign in from ip address with suspicious activity this would be low coming to the next question you have an azure active directory tenant named contoso.com that contain the user shown in the following table we have name members mobile number and mfa status you can create and enforce azure ad identity protection user risk policy that has the following settings first assignment include group 1 exclude group 2 second condition sign in risk of medium and above and third access allow access require password exchange these are the statement if user 1 sign in from an unfamiliar location he must change his password second if user 2 sign in from an anonymous ip address she must change her password and third if user 3 sign in from a computer containing malware that is communicating with known bot server he must change his password and the solutions would be these are the solution if user 1 sign in from unfamiliar location he must change his password this should be yes second if user 2 sign in from anonymous ip address she must change her password this should be yes and third if user 3 sign in from a computer containing malware that is communicating with known bot server he must change his password this should be no because for user 1 user 1 is a member of group 
sign in from unfamiliar location is risk level medium for second user 2 is member of group 1 sign in from anonymous ip address is risk level medium and third sign in from ip addresses with suspicious activity is low coming to the next question you need to configure an access review the review will be assigned to a new collection of review and reviewed by resource owner which three action should you perform in the sequence these are the actions and the correct sequence will be first create an access review program second create an access review control and third set reviewer to group owners coming to the next question you have an azure active directory tenant named contuso.com the tenant contain the user shown in the following table you configure an access review named review1 as shown in the following exif these are the answer area user3 can perform review1 for user3 only user1 and user2 only user1 user2 and user3 second if user2 fail to complete review1 by june 2020 the password administrator role will be revoked from user2 user2 will retain the password administrator role user3 will receive a confirmation request and the solutions would be user3 can perform review1 for user3 only if user2 fails to complete review1 by june 20 2020 user3 will receive the confirmation request coming to the next question you have an azure subscription name server that is associated to an azure active directory tenant name contoso.com and administrator name admin1 has access to the following identity first an open id enabled user account second a hotmail account third account in contoso.com fourth an account in azure ad tenant name fabricam.com you plan to use azure account center to transfer the ownership of subvan to admin to which account can you transfer the ownership of subvan option a contoso.com only option b contoso.com fabricam.com hotmail only option c contoso.com and fabricam.com only option d contoso.com fabricam.com hotmail and open id enabled user account and correct option would be contoso.com and fabricam.com only because when you transfer billing ownership of your subscription to an account in another azure ad tenant you can move the subscription to the new account tenant if you do so all the user group or service principal who had role based access to manage subscription and its resources lose their access only the user in the new account who accept your transfer request will have access to manage the resources 